Good morning. It's been a while. I am sure that that I'm not even sure if it's going to be recording. The Kaleidoscope of recording just did not go through me because just did not want me to hit that nail yet because that was some rough stuff. So um, yes, let's leave that stuff for now and see how this one goes. Or maybe it's the devil's just blocking it. Don't know which one. But whatever it is, we're going to park that for now. I haven't gone forgotten it until God say forgotten it. And this morning we're talking about narrative therapy. Happy preparation day. It's, you can hear a lot of noise in my background. It's super windy outside. Don't even know if I'm going to be blown away this morning. We'll see. Um, so each of us have different narratives or stories in our lives that shape who we are. A lot of the traumas, a lot of the childhood encounters, the way people treat us, the, the situations and circumstances in our lives become part of our script and our narrative that, that we tell ourselves. And that's why it's so important and significant for parents not to say certain words to their children, because when you say that, it becomes a part of their thread in their neurological mind, in their brain, their neurological pathways. And that becomes a part of the script and the lies that they feed themselves. Like, I'm not good enough. Oh, I, oh, I can't do this. And not recognizing that every, sometimes we have to perform and we expect to be bold. And when everybody has some jitters, and that's the norm. But we feed ourselves the lies that I'm going to be criticized, so I'm not going to do it. Other people are going to say stuff. And that becomes part of our narrative. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens strengthen us. That is the script. That is the narrative and story we need to tell ourselves that we have the power and the authority in Jesus Christ to do all that he has placed in our hearts. If one, one speaker put it this way, if you don't have the skill to do it, God didn't call you to do it. There's so many opportunities in our lives to look back at some of the lies that have been fed to us. Some of them are, are generational lies that have been passed on from generation before we were born. Some of them were lies because of the, the challenges and the struggles that our four parents went through that's been passed on to us. Some of them are lies that society has placed in our minds, narratives and scripts that need to be changed. One of the things that we I want to tell us this morning that whatever's boxing us in, that's not from God. God fences us in to protect us from the enemy, but he doesn't box us in. He's our shepherd, so oftentimes he puts an edge around us. As the, en the enemy accused Job that God of putting an edge around Job. So God puts an edge of protection around us, and he says he will give his angel charge over us to keep us in all of our ways so we do not dash our foot against a stone. What box is putting yourself in this morning as it's based on your past experience that's allowing you to be crippled in all you do? What are the stories that we feed and tell ourselves? Stories that we've been told by others who don't seem to care about us. What story that we're telling ourselves that's, that's, that has been our truth that needs to be reauthored and rewrite this morning. Jesus has reauthored our story on the cross that day. He said he has given us the power and the authority to trample on the lives of the enemy. This morning, I decided I would not buy into the lies of the enemy that he tried to plant in my mind this morning. There's so many troubles going on. So many, so many unnumerable. I cannot stop to count. But this morning... God wants to reauthor our story. He wants to rewrite our script. But in order for our scripts to write, we have to have that light for a moment. We have to see the need and to recognize that the enemy is trying to write lies into our lives. The challenge is that it distorts our, our psychological thinking. It, do, it distorts everything we see from in, in the way we see God through our lenses. So it's time to flip the script and to rewrite our narratives, recognizing that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. No, no one can break you unless God give them that power and that authority to break you. They can make your life difficult. Ask Joseph. He had to wait. He didn't allow his brother's criticism and his father's doubt and disbelief in him. And all the, the part of his wife tried to come at him when he tried to service God. The imprisonments of Egypt could not break him or take away the dream that God had planted in his life. Ask Tamar. Tamar recognized that the promise was with Judah and his tribe. And when Judah walked away after selling his brother into slavery, and he went down to his friend Timnah and decided to shack up, walking away from the very blessing that his father gave him, the very promise that was on his life for the lineage of the Messiah. I did not been for Tamar act of, on what you want to call it, I'm not sure it's bravery, but whatever she did, that rescued the lineage of Judah. Colorful and disgraceful as it looked, Tamar feigned the prostitute to get justice. Not saying she should have, I'm just saying. Because of that act, God saw beyond her disgrace 
and God allowed her to become the lineage of Christ. I'm not saying God needed her help because he didn't. I'm not saying she needed to do that because God doesn't need help. But oftentimes our narratives become ugly. Tamar did not want being in black at her father's house for the rest of her life, be short change from Judah to become her script and her narrative. Esther, Esther was an orphan. Her parents died. She lived with her cousin, Mordecai. Mordecai taught her different things. And at times she lost herself and hide her identity. But when it was right and most important in her life, she recognized that she had to flip the script and stop living in the hidden, hidden corners and had to stand up even if she was standing alone. Even if it cost her life, even if I perish, I perish. Ruth, Ruth was born a Moabite, said descendant from Lot. We know about Lot. Lot was self-centered from start to finish. Even when his, his father died and, and Uncle Abraham took him along with him, he took the best of everything. No consideration for the old man and his flock. But yet Abraham loved him immensely. Now the descendants of uh, Am I saying the story right? <laughs> Some of my whispers on the story. And so, so when Lot was taken from Sodom and Gomorrah, his daughter slept with him, and those descendants were the Moabites. So Ruth decided to flip that script. She recognized that the God of, of Naomi was her God, and she wanted a part of what, even though Naomi could not see God in herself, like many of you can't see God in yourself this morning, Ruth decided to flip that script. And she decided to read alter her story as an Israelite. And because of that, she was given to the lineage of Christ, written in the genealogy of Christ. Whatever you're going through this morning, it may be difficult. It may be windy outside as I'm hearing and howling and growling. But Jesus has given you that I can do all things through Christ, which you strengthen at me. Jesus has promised that he can make even the seemingly difficult situation. He can work them for a greater good. Not that they're good because they're not. And oftentimes we think, oh, all things are good. No, they are not good. He says he can work even a difficult situation in our lives for good. I can't see this morning how he's going to do that because I am convinced it's time to dust my feet off and move on. And God is about to do something new in our lives. Whether it's dusting our feet and move on or whether it's sitting in the mess until he chart that path in ter territory. You don't have to be defined by your failures in the past. You don't have to be defined by somebody else's ideology, somebody else's failure that they're trying to bag on you. You don't have to be defined by anybody else's script. God has re-altered your story, whether it's past pain, abuse, hurt, disappointment, abandonment, whatever it is that you're struggling with this morning, whether abuse or sin in your life, it's time to flip the script we alter that story and recognize all power is given unto you. Great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this morning and thank you for knowing our narrative that we do. Sometimes our narrative are shaded because we see them through the lenses and the earth and the pain. But this morning, God, you've given us the opportunity to rewrite those scripts in Jesus Christ through his blood in Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you for making our narrative a story worth reading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day.